Welcome back to a guide to surviving a stroke and brain injury. Um, this is part two of my videos of the nine strokes that you can have in your brain. Uh, I think I went over them the last time, so I'm not going to go over them again. But I just wanted to start with the stroke that I did have. The first stroke, which I did have first, was the cerebellar stroke. I went through that in my last video. This video is called the pawn stroke, which I did have my second stroke two weeks after the cerebellum. So I just kind of want to go over that, and then we'll go into the other types of strokes you can have. So this is really scary, but every 40 seconds in the U.S., a stroke happens. <laughs> According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, unfortunately, this makes us that makes it a common health condition. A stroke occurs when the bloodstream uh, has a supply to. I'm sorry, a stroke occurs when the supply of blood to the brain. There you go, Gay. I had a stroke. Did I tell you that? <laughs> um, to Blood supply to the brain is compromised by either a clogged artery called an ischemic stroke or a burst artery, which is a hemorrhagic stroke. I had both. My cerebellar was a ischemic, and my pawn stroke, which we're about to talk about now, was a brain bleed, a hemorrhagic stroke. The quan contains nuclei that relay signals from the forebrain here to the cerebellum here along with nuclei that deal primarily with sleep respiration impaired breathing and required life support sometimes uh, loss of consciousness a coma uh, locked-in syndrome which is horrible I'm so grateful that I didn't have that but uh, it's the entire body becomes paralyzed except for the eyes. Uh, changes in sensation. Weakness in the limbs. Swallowing and speech difficulty. Bladder control. Hearing. Equilibrium. Taste. Eye movement. Facial expressions. Facial sensations. And posture. And then we're not talking about my bad posture. We're talking about serious posture problems. Uh, the pawns, while involved in the regulation of functions carried out by cranial nerves, it also works together with the medulla oblongata to serve an especially critical role in generating the respiratory rhythm of breathing, which is serious. Active functioning of the pawns may also be fundamental to rapid eye movement. So when you sleep, that's when REM occurs, rapid eye movement. And if you have this stroke, it can cause you to not have that. So I'm going to put up the picture here. Move my grubby little hands. So as you can see, the brain stem consists of three parts of it. So the first is the midbrain. The second is the pons, and the third is the medulla oblongata. So I had a pawn stroke, but it is possible to get strokes in one of these or all three of these, but it's called a brainstem stroke. So a stroke in the pons region of the brain can cause symptoms with balance, coordination, double vision, which these are prism glasses, <laughs> pinpoint pupils, which I want to go into explain to what that is. A lot of people do not know what that is, but I have it along with double vision. So when my stroke first occurred, I wanted everything dark, everything. It is because of the pinpoint pupils. Um, I wore sunglasses and it was pretty dark in my room because the light just killed me. It hurt my head so bad. It gave me a headache. Uh, 
I didn't want any light. They'd always turn on the light or open up the curtains, and I would have to yell at them because it was just too bright. And fortunately, it does get better. And I still have problems when I turn off the lights now, seeing in the dark is really hard for me. The transition, my pupils don't dilate the way they're supposed to. So the transition part of it doesn't happen until much later. When it, mostly when it's too late. <laughs> like trying to go to the bathroom or turning off the lights to go to bed or stuff like that. So I've learned how to deal with it, but it is, it is real. Pinpoint pupils. <laughs> So we're, I lost it. Give me a second to find it. Okay, the next is respiratory disturbances and failures, which I'm so lucky I didn't have that. I didn't have to be put on a ventilator, but I did have problems with my respiration. Uh, hypothermia, which really surprised me because I remember being cold, like really cold, but I don't know if it was hypothermia or not, but that's one of the symptoms. Loss of sensation, so I couldn't feel things, uh, I couldn't hear things, I still have trouble tasting certain things, uh, and obviously seeing uh, weakness in half the body, so my stroke was on the left side of my palms, so it affected my whole right side, and I was paralyzed. And so now I'm happy to report <laughs> I can do everything. I still have intention tremors, but other than that, everything has come back. Uh, it's a type of stroke that affects the pons region of the brainstem. A pontine stroke can be particularly devastating and may lead to paralysis and the rare condition of locked-in syndrome. A pons stroke is also involved in various functions including modulation of consciousness, sleep cycles, pain, posture, tone, and balance. Some side effects of pontine stroke can be restored through her rehab, like I'm a perfect example of how it's possible. Specifically, loss of sensation, weakness in the limbs, and difficulty with speech and swallowing can be improved. So I couldn't swallow. Uh, don't know the timeline because I was kind of out of it then. But they were giving me, they wouldn't give me french fries, for example. Because I remember getting so upset. I'm like, what is the big deal about french fries? But I couldn't swallow. So everything was liquefied. Fun. <laughs> Really fun. Uh, my speech, I have aphasia. And as you can tell with my speech therapy pathologist, whatever she called, Allison, I love you. <laughs> but um, with her help, I think I speak pretty well now. I'm still not perfect or normal to the world's definition, but... I'm getting there, and I'm so grateful. It, uh, I, I hope you guys can agree that it, it depends on if I'm anxious or tired or I'm vomiting words, you know, like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so, uh, here are the rehabilitation methods your medical team or caregivers or yourself, like I, I did, may use or suggest for recovery. When you lose the ability to feel, like I did, in my nerves, my hands, and it was horrible, or your sensations get all mixed up, sensory re-education can help you recover. It really can. Sensory re-education involves retraining the brain to correctly interpret your senses through sensory re-education exercises, such as touching, touching different textures or temperatures. So I didn't do the temperature thing because I'm by myself, so <laughs> that was kind of scary. But what I did do, I think I did it in a video previously to this, where 
I reached into a cup and I had paper clips, I had little balls, I had uh, beads, I had certain things. So I would reach in there not looking and try to tell what it was. And when I pull it out, with my affected hand by the way, when I pull it out, I would see if I was right or wrong. In the beginning, I was always wrong. <laughs> So I just want to warn you, you guys are going to be wrong, <laughs> but it helps because it helped rewire my brain saying, that's a paper clip. And I look at it, that's a paper clip. It's verifying what it is. And the more you practice and do it, the more it becomes a reality. So speech therapy. If you struggle with swallowing, like I did, it's called dysphagia. Um, so I couldn't swallow my saliva. Couldn't swallow drinks. I couldn't suck out of a straw. And I think there's a video in my occupational uh, therapy video, I think I did, where I had to learn how to suck out of a straw and blow. Because I couldn't blow, like, say you have a dandelion, you know, with all those seeds and you blow it and they all go away I couldn't do that so I had to relearn that it's just like riding a bike you have to relearn over and over and over again until you finally get it until your brain rewires it to a different place of your brain that can handle that function so uh, I had speech difficulties, which is called asphagia. Aphasia. Um, at first, I was very monotone. I had no inflection in my voice at all, and you couldn't understand anything. So it was like locked-in syndrome, but I could move, but I was trapped up in here. So I knew what I was saying in my head, but I just couldn't get it out. Also which was frustrating is um, so say this is a lighter it is lighter <laughs> but I knew it was lighter in my head I knew it was lighter but out coming out of my mouth I would say paper and I knew its function I knew it lit up with fire <laughs> I knew everything but I I could not find that word. So word finding was a part of what my speech therapist helped me with too. And then the pronunciation of words, which I'm still working on, but as you can see, if you go back and look at the beginning, I'm talking well. <laughs> so, uh, occupational therapy is, a sec is a, another kind of therapy. Uh, it's a great way to improve your proficiency with the activities of daily living and aid you in becoming more independent. So, um, I can do everything but intentional. So, I have intentional tremors in my right hand. So, if I try to eat, see the shaking. If I try to write, it shakes. And it's always in a zigzag pattern. I don't know why, but it is. Uh, but other things, like I'm finally able to button up my clothes, and I'm able to fold clothes now. Not to what my standards were before, but I, I'm able to. I'm able to not break dishes like I used to when I first started this. Um, I can load the dishwasher. I can grab something out of the fridge, because I was right-handed before the stroke happened. So it's very frustrating. I understand everything you're going through, but recovery is possible. I'm living proof, and I'm going to keep going on until everything is fixed. <laughs> so, um, ponting stroke recovery time. So it depends on how massive your stroke was. Uh, mine was pretty massive. Uh, they say that if you had a minor stroke, that six months is the longest usually it takes to recover. If you have a massive stroke, like I did, it could take years. So, stroke recovery revolves around rewiring your brain.
It does. And mass practice is very powerful for healing. Um, it's impossible to estimate your recovery time because every stroke is different. I know I get tired of it too, but every stroke is different. Every person is different. Uh, the severity of every stroke is different. The, I had two, so I was dealing with multiple strokes. So, I mean, you have to factor in all of these, you know, elements. And you just have to, you just have to give yourself a break. I'm going to cry, sorry. But uh, sometimes I'm hard on myself. And you went through a major stroke. No matter if it was small or big, you still went through a major stroke. Your whole life changed that day. I know mine did. And give yourself a break. It'll happen. Don't worry about, don't focus on the recovery time. Focus on you and what you're doing today, what you're able to do today. That's why I always say celebrate every victory, big or small. Because it really does affect your mindset, your, um, what do they call it? It's like psychology, a positive reinforcement. You know, positive psychology is what you need to practice now. And not be so hard on yourself. And if you fail, think of it, okay, that's one new way of not to do it. So I got to keep trying to do it a different way. And it eventually comes. I am five and a half years out. And I started off not being able to talk in a wheelchair. And my whole right side was paralyzed. And now look at me. Now don't say, oh my God, she recovered this much in five years. And I'm not there. Doesn't matter. Because your stroke is different than my stroke. I can't emphasize that enough. You are doing your best. As long as you practice every day and you keep trying and never give up hope, it'll happen. No matter the time, no matter the process, it'll happen. And be proud of yourself. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I mean, you're here watching this video right now trying to discover another way to recover. And that's important to remember and embrace, and it'll happen for you. Just mass practice uh, <laughs> and positive thinking. That's all I can say. So celebrate every victory. Next time, I'm going to do the frontal lobe stroke. And uh, so in the meantime, celebrate every victory. Count what matters. And discard what doesn't matter. And I love you and you're doing an awesome job. See you next time.